Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the nitric oxide synthase enzymes. So, so far what we've discussed is that there are three proteins, uh, three different types of NOS protein, which are by the name of NOS1, NOS2, and NOS3. Now, in order to actually function as nitric oxide synthesizers, what they're going to have to do is dimerize together. Now, why do they have to dimerize? Why isn't the protein on its own capable of catalyzing the reaction? Well, the reason is that uh, this oxygenase domain from this, let's call this the first um, NOS uh, protein. So, let's, uh, shall we say this is uh, NOS1 specifically, so neuronal NOS. So, both of these uh, NOS uh, proteins are NOS1. Okay, so let's say this first NOS1 protein here, and let's say call this one here in the homodimer the second NOS1 protein. Now, the oxygenase domain of this first NOS1 protein is going to work with the reductase domain of this second uh, NOS1 protein, and the re oxygenase domain of the second NOS protein is going to work with the reductase domain of the first NOS protein. So these are effectively the active units of the enzyme. These are in the right conformation to actually work. This is the active unit of the enzyme. So, when you form this homodimer, you actually have two nitric oxide synthase enzymes in the dimer, just like you have two nitric oxide synthase proteins. But, this o the oxygenase domain and the reductase domain on just a single NOS protein aren't in the correct uh, conformation relative to one another in order to work together to actually create nitric oxide. So instead, uh, what you have to have is um, you have to have two of them dimerized together in a homodimer and then um, you can have an oxygenase domain in the right conformation relative to uh, the reductase domain of the second component of the dimer in order for them to catalyze their reaction. Okay, so let's have a uh, recap of the reaction that they're going to uh, catalyze, and then we'll see how this structure relates to that reaction. <coughs> okay, so uh, the substrate for nitric oxide synthase enzymes is L-arginine. So let me show you the structure of L-arginine. So L-arginine is an amino acid. It's one that's used in proteins. So let's start by drawing the basic structure of an amino acid. So here is our uh, core structure of the amino acid, with the alpha carbon here, the amino group up here, and the carboxyl group down here. Now, the R group, in the case of L-arginine, has these three methylene groups, like so. So these are all methylene groups. And then uh, the next atom along in the R group is then a nitrogen atom. So you have nitrogen here, with a hydrogen coming off it, and then a carbon after that, and then an amine group coming off here, okay, and then a double bond down to a nitrogen here with a hydrogen off. Now, these two nitrogens at the end here that are bound off this carbon, they have what is known as a resonance structure, i.e., uh, this double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen here, it can flip between the two. So this carbon can go from having a double bond with this nitrogen to having a single bond with this nitrogen, and it will instead have a double bond with this nitrogen here. So um, that's what's known as a resonating structure, uh, where the bond, the double bond, can flip between the two of them, basically. And it's because of the symmetry of this structure here. And you might say, well, how can this nitrogen form a double bond here? It's um, already got um, it's already got these two hydrogens coming off here, so it's already got three bonds. Well, remember, it has a lone pair of electrons here. So effectively, what can happen is it can give those lone pairs of electrons to the carbon in order to form another covalent bond here and turn that into a double bond. And then the two bonds here will go back to this nitrogen, so you get this sort of resonating structure, basically. Okay, and you also need to remember that whilst this one is in this state where it's got this double bond uh, to a carbon, it will also have a lone pair of electrons off here, which can interact with protons. So, in effect, basically, um, you, um, you do, ha well, you do have, there is 
uh, not really one of the, it's not fair to say that one of these nitrogens has the double bond and one of them has the single bond. For that reason, um, both of them are referred to as the guanidino nitrogens. So these are the guanidino nitrogens. Okay, right, so the guanidino nitrogens. Right, so um, let's now show the reaction that's going to be catalyzed by uh, this nitric oxide synthase enzyme. So it's going to uh, take the L-arginine that we have here, so this is L-arginine, okay, and uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to reduce it, like so. Well, it's going to, um, it's going to add it, it's going to bring in uh, NADPH, it's going to bring in um, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, which in the reduced state, so this is reduced NADPH, okay? And that reduced NADPH uh, is going to, well, reduced NADP is going to provide its two electrons along with its two protons to this reaction. Now, uh, if we go back to our structure of the enzyme, we showed this, um, this binding site for NADP. So what's going to basically happen is you're going to get L-arginine coming and binding to the oxygenase domain over here. So let's draw the L-arginine binding site over here. So let me colour it in um, a blue, uh, well now I'll colour it in an orange colour. So, uh, the L-arginine is going to come in and bind to this orange site over here. So this is where the L-arginine binds. So this is the L-arginine binding site here. Okay? Now, uh, the NADP, uh, or the reduced NADP, is going to come in over here. So this is the L-arginine binding site, and now we know when the NADP is going to come in. Right. As I say, uh, reduced NADP uh, is going to provide two electrons, and what's going to happen is those electrons are going to be gradually flit, uh, they're going to gradually be moved towards this L-arginine. But they're not actually going to go to the L-arginine. I'm going to show you the final thing that's going to be involved in this reaction, which is oxygen. So you also bring in an oxygen into this reaction. Now, the oxygen is going to load over here similarly. The oxygen is going to actually bind to the heme group here. So remember I told you this, what, this box here represented a heme group. And what's going to happen is that the oxygen is going to bind to that heme group. Now, what's going to happen is the NADP is going to give up its electrons, which are going to move from the NADP to the FAD, the flavin adenine dinucleotide, then to the flavin mono, uh, sorry, the flavin uh, mono, uh, mononucleotide, um, and then uh, it, it's going to move to the heme group on the oxygenase domain, and then it's going to be passed to the oxygen that's attached to the heme group uh, via a coordinate bond. So basically, you'll, you get this chain of movement of electrons. It goes from the reduced NADP over here, then to the flavin adenine dinucleotide, then to the flavin mononucleotide, then to the heme group, and then finally uh, to the oxygen. So you're going to reduce the oxygen. Okay, and by doing that, what you're going to do is produce water. When you reduce oxygen, you get water. So you're going to provide two electrons and two hydrogens to this oxygen atom, and that's going to create water. Okay, so um, you imagine cleaving this double bond between the two oxygen atoms. Then you've got an oxygen atom. You're putting in from the uh, reduced NADP two electrons. Now, I didn't tell you anything about the protons moving along this chain, and in a way they're not going to move along this chain. Instead, what will happen is that you'll have protons in the medium, basically. Um, so protons are readily available from the cytoplasm. So when uh, the reduced NADP gives up its electrons to move through this sort of chain of molecules, uh, then um, the uh, protons will go off into the cytoplasm, and they may or may not be the protons that are in the end going to come back to the water. Okay, so in effect what's going to happen is you're going to get uh, give those two electrons to one of the oxygen atoms of this oxygen uh, molecule, that's going to create uh, an oxygen with two extra electrons, and then all it needs is two protons to come and bind to it to create water. Okay, so that's one of the byproducts you're going to get off. Now, this other oxygen atom you get is then going to react with the um, L-arginine residue, which is bound very close by. 
And basically what's going to happen is you're going to cleave this bond between this guanadino nitrogen here and this hydrogen, and you're going to then stick the oxygen in the middle. So you're going to forge a single bond between the nitrogen and an oxygen. So we'll put the oxygen here, and then another single bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and that will create you uh, NG for guanadino nitrogen hydroxy L-arginine. Okay, now let me just draw that structure out in full. Right, so uh, again, it's pretty much unchanged from above, except that we've now uh, stuck in this oxygen in between our guanadino nitrogen here and this hydrogen that's off the guanadino nitrogen. So, uh, here's the, amino, the generic amino acid structure. So you have this uh, amino group up here, the alpha carbon in the middle, and then the carboxylic acid group down here. And then you have these methylene groups, like so. So three methylene groups, one, two, three. And then you have a nitrogen here with a hydrogen coming off it. And a carbon going to an amino group up here. And now it's got this double bond to the nitrogen down here, which has then got a hydroxyl group coming off. So that is uh, the guanadino nitrogen hydroxy, because you've now got a hydroxyl group off that guanadino nitrogen, L-arginine. Okay, right, so that's the uh, intermediate step in your reaction uh, that's going to be catalyzed by uh, your uh, nitric oxide synthase enzyme. We'll discuss the next step in the next video.